I think something new for this month's book haul is this is the first time where a couple of the things I received are influencing what I'm actually going to read within the next couple months. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back with another book haul, this time for April of 2024. Lots of nice new things have made their way into my home library, and I'm going to kind of talk to you guys about those today. But we're going to begin, like always, guys, we're going to talk about those books that do count. They are, of course, digital purchases on your favorite e-reading device. I like the Kindle Oasis. So uh, first up, a book that I've talked about recently is because we are going to be doing a group read along. Philip and uh, John at Talking Story and Brian over at Bell Tube and I are forming something called the Quilluminati, where every quarter or so we're going to get together, pick a book that's kind of maybe not on our TBRs, a little outside of our comfort zone. Nine of, none of us have read them. And we're going to kind of get together and talk about that. And the one for June is going to be The Vanished Birds by Simon Jimenez. So since this is a book I'd never even heard of until they did pick it, I went ahead and picked it up on digital. So I will have it ready to go when we do get to it this month. So again, I don't know a ton about it. But honestly, they had me at sci-fi coming of age story. So easy sell in that regard. But we'll see. It's interesting the feedback I've gotten is like, oh, Mike, I'm so glad you're reading that. I don't think you're going to like it, but I'm so glad you're reading it. So we will see where I do fall on on that one. And another sci-fi big one, uh, Just Quiet Gods by Christopher Rocchio. I already have the hardcover of it, but I like to support my friend uh, Christopher and pick up all of his stuff. I've even picked, I've even bought his audio books just to kind of help him out, even though I don't audio very much, but uh, at all, really. A new Sun Eater book always feels like an event of some sort, and I am happy to support him in any way I can because what I've said in the past, guys, I feel like Christopher deserves to be a household name within the sci-fi community, and I feel like he is finally on his way and is well-deserved, and I'll be picking up Disquiet Guys here rather soon. Another one I'll be picking up rather soon is continuing with the saga of The Forgotten Warrior by Larry Correa, and I realized I did not have Tower of Silence yet. That's book four in the series, so I went ahead and added that to my collection here. Should be doing book number two here this month and just kind of working my way slowly through it for the release of book number five this fall. So I think that's an underrated series. At least one book in, I feel that way because I don't feel like when I was reading, I was like, why are not more people talking about this series? So very, very good. So check out Son of the Black Sword if you have it. But that's kind of what I picked up on the old Kindle this month. Uh, physical purchases, I'm sure if you guys have been kind of with me here for a few months, you know we did do a major... Uh, renovation of the house and that kind of took all my funny money away so i haven't really been paying for very many books at the moment just because mm, we need to kind of catch up a little bit because we did always it's always over time and over budget right so uh, i think all i really did was i, I pre-ordered you like it darker by stephen king so that doesn't actually you know show up until the may so i'll be showing the book of you like it darker in the may book haul that's really the only physical purchase i made in the month of april and it's been hard guys it's hard that's two months in a row and I haven't actually bought anything. So <laughs> I'm trying to stick by my word. And I did tell myself, okay, I'm paying this much to have these home renovations done. Uh, I got to kind of start to curb it up elsewhere. And that was one of those. Not buying uh, Coke Zero from the work vending machine was another one. So, hey, we all have our vices, right? How about some books from some authors, guys? Did to get a couple things that I want to talk about here. And I always want to say that I appreciate everything you guys send me. I might not ever be able to get to it, but if I could shine a spotlight on it for this book haul, I would be happy to do that. So thank you guys so much for sending that. I will drop the link below if you guys want to check in these out, and I encourage you to do so. Give these guys your support because they do need it. First up, a couple from Isaiah France, and this is The Sorceress of Power and uh, Tasha, The Last Princess Warrior. This is like a collection. I think it's a prequel and books one through three. So Isaiah sent me a few things over the years here. So thank you, Isaiah. I'm glad you continue to do that. This is uh, The Rings of Hydra. Now, he's actually sent me three of these. These are from uh, Kevin P. Sullivan. It's like Kevin Sullivan, like the Dungeon of Doom. Does anybody? I doubt anyone here watched old 1990s WCW besides me. Dungeon of Doom, Kevin Sullivan. He's a wrestling legend. Uh, this is Arden's Revenge. This is The Rings of Hydra. So I guess it's a series called The Rings of Hydra or are these like prequels to it? I'm not sure. And this is Rings of Hydra, The Great Escape. So thank you so much, Kevin, for sending those over. Really cool covers. I really like that. And Rings of Hydra is a great name, if that is the name of your series. This is Wrath of Comic-Con by David Reddish. So I was talking about Comic-Con the other day, saying like I remember back when you go to Comic-Con, there were no lines. It was a good old time. It was wild back then, let me tell you. Uh, this is Tilleran. This is by Julian Fogel. Tilleran, I hope I'm saying that right. 
Really cool script on the back. I like that a lot. And my good buddy, P.L. Stewart, I want to read his books eventually. I'm going to. He writes these big old chonkers, and he writes so damn fast. And guys, you follow P.L. over on Instagram. He's always writing from these beautiful, beautiful locations, too. This is book four in Drowned Kingdom. Is it Drowned Kingdom? Yeah, Drowned Kingdom Saga. is book number four, Alliance Pride. And again... This guy's a machine. He's just grinning because he knows I'm writing faster than you can actually read these guys. But uh, PL, all around, great guy. And I'm sure a great author. And we'll find out eventually. Uh, you guys know I'm a big Gen Xer, so I have a lot of nostalgia for anything 80s. And this one coming <laughs> in the form of a Trapper Keeper folder is just amazing. This is from DB Albiza, and this is called Cruel Nature. And you see inside of here, you got the book, but he's got all this extra stuff to make it look like it's actually a Trapper Keeper, all the material for the book and stuff. So cool, so cool. I, I am honestly thinking about putting this, I have a three ring binder, I'm thinking about putting this in there and actually using it because I do have a lot of nostalgia for Trapper Keeper. I did have several over the years of my uh, junior high and high school life and uh, yeah, they just have such cool stuff. I just, I, and the honest thing is, I don't know if they still make Trapper Keeper stuff if they just make like memorabilia now. I have no idea. I have no idea on that one. Last one here, this is from one of my patrons as well as a published author and this, he continues to have just the coolest damn covers out there. This is Fall of Giants. It's by Gregory Contaxis. This is book two in his Dance of Light series. And he sent me again a beautiful, beautiful hardcover to go along with the prequel in book one that he sent me. And this one, guys, came with maps. And you know me, fantasy fans in general, not just me. I, I think we have a weakness for all things maps, right? So give me some nice little cartographical goodies and I'm quite happy. So Gregory, thank you so much. Uh, I know your hard work is gonna be rewarded here very soon. And uh, this is just too cool. Thank you so much for sending me this hardcover. It's naked hardcover. It's just beautiful. And uh, yeah, again, thank you. This is just stunning, stunning. And I appreciate it. So I hope you guys will check out some of these books in the links down below. Let's look at some things from some publishers. And again, what I always tell people is if we actually had correspondence and I just forgot, I have to apologize. I do get just hundreds of messages per month. And so if it doesn't have a note and just has like a shipping label, I assume it's from the publisher. But if we actually spoke, again, I'll drop the link down below for all these if you want to look them up. This is for Whom the Selkie Sings by Asher Allen. Said I always do love the nice little uh, charcoal drawings. It's really cool. This uh, couple books from the series called Game Over. This is Rise of the Raid Mob and Memory Wars by M.J. Sullivan. But not Michael J. Sullivan. M.J. Sullivan. Those covers look very, I don't know, Ready Player One-ish. Very cool. The Body Harvest. Hey, that's fell. The Body Harvest. This is by Michael Sedlinger. I hope I'm saying that correctly. So check those links, guys. This is a uh, a couple books from a series called Necro by C.W. Subtle. Necro and uh, Lauder the Venomous. Again, very cool art. I think the art on indie books just gets better and better. And now this is one, guys, I have heard so much about this series from out of nowhere. From out of nowhere. It was like, I didn't hear nothing. And then like, I can't hear, hear, stop hearing people talk about it all of a sudden. This is The Silver Blood Promise by James Logan. This was sent to me by Tor uh, actually early. And if you watch my recent weekly update, I said I'm actually thinking about breaking my TBR and reading this now because I've just heard so much about it and I checked out the synopsis. Sounds really fresh, sounds really cool. And I also just like, you know, I don't get the opportunity very much to read and review a book one in a series anymore. Like the last time I really did that for, you know, just it just kind of broke my plans and did it was Justice of Kings, which I really actually ended up loving. So this one I've had, it comes highly recommended, of course, by my guy Patrick and others, but it, it sounds very, very cool. So I'm debating after I finish Priest of Crown starting this. So I'm asking for feedback if you guys want me to do that, but check this out if you haven't. I've, I've heard a ton of great, great things about it. This one came from The Broken Binding. I actually did an unboxing up for it. And I don't really do unboxings on the channel very often. Kind of want to give people the idea of what it's like to get something from the Broken Binding. So I had no idea actually what it was, you know, until I actually opened it. And it turned out to be The Lies of Locke Lamora, which is just an amazing, amazing version of this book. So I show it all in detail in there and show you the artwork, show you all the edges, everything. This is just, again, another stunning, stunning edition by The Broken Binding who just does not miss. So if you guys 
have not subscribed to Broken Binding and you have the opportunity to do so, I know their waiting list is rather long because they are so popular, but they do things so great. So I say get your name on that waiting list now for beautiful, beautiful things like this. Now they're starting to dip into sci-fi as well. So they got some Andy Weir books coming here pretty soon. And uh, yeah, Broken Binding is amazing. So you guys, make sure you check them out. Something that I did uh, rather recently was I started reading R.A. Salvatore. You know, R.A. Salvatore, obviously, big, big name in the fantasy community. Regardless of how you feel about it, you cannot deny the man's impact on the genre. I feel like he's just he's just fantasy royalty at this point. And thing was, until I talked to him right before, I never knew he did very much besides, you know, Forgotten Realm stuff, Drist, and, and Star Wars books. Had no idea he had a whole nother series called Corona, a.k.a. the Demon War Saga. So when I talked to him, uh, he was like, well, you know what, they're going to be re-releasing those books here pretty soon. I'll tell you what, when they come out, maybe I'll send you some. Cool. I didn't expect him to ever follow through on that. Uh, he followed through and then some. So through collaboration with Simon and Schuster Saga Press, you might have heard of them. Get well soon, Brian. Uh, he sent me the new book in this series, Demon War. Now, look, I know Demon Wars, what I do know about it is it was a trilogy, kind of a bridge novel, and another trilogy. But this is like a new book within that world. And I don't know if this is going to be like a standalone book or if this is going to be the beginning of a new series or what is Pen Quickle's Folly. This comes out here rather soon, but it is a new book set within the Demon Wars world. But Mr. Salvatore and Simon Schuster Saga Press did send me the entire set of the first seven books. These are massive, massive little chunks. I'm so used to R.A. Salvatore writing those Drist books. I'm not used to him having them just this this massive, but it is. It's, it's seven of these. They all have matching spines and all that. If you are wanting something like that, I think it's really, really great. But I am incredibly interested in reading this series. So much so that I'm going to read book one, Demon Awakens. I'm going to read that in June. I'm throwing it on my list for June. Yes, even before I get back to Drist, because I'm just very excited to check this out. And I want to say thank you uh, to, to Bob and, of course, to saga press were sending these to me they didn't have to do this you know they could have just sent me that new book or something that would have been well more than enough but to send me this complete set of this newly uh, remastered i guess you call it and a reprint of this famous series uh yeah excited to do it and think was like after i talked about it uh there are people coming out of the woodwork saying how much they love it the only one i'd even heard mention that series before was alan over at library of alexandria says it's one of his favorite series of all time. So, I mean, that was enough right there to get it on my radar, if Alan is saying that. But then you've got, uh, you know, a lot of other people that I know that read a lot more classic fancy than I have that will say really, really great things about it. And I'm interested to see how uh, how he does outside of Forgotten Realms, because if people will say that the magic system in this is just phenomenal, and I'm anxious to see uh, what Mr. Salvador can do with that. So thank you to him. Thank you, Saga Press. You guys are far too kind. Thank you, everyone who sent something over. Let's look at some things that some viewers did send me here. Well, first, you kind of probably noticed I am wearing a Realm of the Eldlings t-shirt here. This came with just a letter that said Mick G. And I'm like, Mick G, is that like the movie director? The guy that directed Terminator Salvation? Is that is that who? I had no idea Mick G, the movie director, was a fan of this channel. But if that's who it is, hey, awesome. If not, no matter who it is, thank you so much for this. It was really, really cool. Now being a graduate of the realm of the Eldlings, that's really awesome. You might see me taking a sip out of this nice Dunder Mifflin mug. This came from Beth. Thank you, Beth. Anyone who is a fan of The Office, will appreciate this mug, I think. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take it to my office. It only seems fitting to do it that way. I got another mug. This one was from Kellen. Kellen is one of my... It kind of got lost over here. I think my kids came in here. We're running around with it because... Yeah, something breakable. The kids are just like... It's like a magnet. Uh, this is from For All Mankind, a show that I got him interested in watching. And he did love it. Hi, Bob. This is a Jamestown's Lunar Base. You guys got to watch this series a little bit to understand what it is. Amazing series for all mankind. If you haven't done it yet, do so immediately. For all mankind is amazing. And uh, it's a really, really cool mug. Thank you so much, Kellen. Kellen, is, uh, he's, he's really excited about me reading Discworld, but not in the, uh, the, the the kind of aggressive way that some have. He's fine with me starting with Color of Magic. He's just glad that I'm reading it. But that's a, <laughs> a different topic altogether. I want to talk about this letter I got. I got a letter from a viewer named Cheryl and saying it's from one constant reader to another. And I tell you guys, I really appreciate when you send me a handwritten letter because again, Gen X or something like snail mail is just, it's so charming to think back to. And I feel like anyone can send a text message, anyone can send an email, anyone can, you know, type something up on Microsoft Word and print it and send it to you. But if you're going to sit there and handwrite it, 
I just feel like that has so much more meaning. You know, and it means so much more. And she wrote me a four-page letter about her experience of becoming a constant reader and gave me credit for it. Honestly, it was kind of had me teary-eyed a little bit. Saying that, you know, used to be, she'd been watching my channel for a long time. And whenever I talk about Stephen King, uh, you know, she would always be like, ah, oh, yeah, whatever. It's just one thing I'm just never going to get into. And so she tried a couple books. Next thing she knows, she has written, she has read 17 Stephen King books. and considers herself a constant reader now, thanks to my Into the Multiverse series. And she sent me this wonderful gift to say thank you. And it says, I had to go get this from my couch before I started recording. Because it has not left my sofa. Yes, it is a Stephen King blanket. With all of, not all of it, a good number of his book covers on it. And yes, this is a permanent fixture downstairs when we watch movies and it gets a little chilly down there sometimes. And I did get a letter from, I did get my, my card from Judy, my monthly pen pal. Judy did send me a card. Thank you so much. I'm so happy you continue to watch this channel and send me correspondence. It means a ton. But guys, that was everything I got in April. Would you guys get anything new this month? Anything that you, you want to see a better look at? You want me? To, you want to see pictures of these Demon War uh, Saga novels? I put them all on my Instagram, so follow me on Instagram if you want to see a lot of these books outside of these book hauls, because I do post a lot of those on there. Let me know if you guys want me to read Silver Blood Promise. If you want me to just break my TBR and just go for it, because I'd love to cover that for you if you do. So drop in the comments, guys. Let me know all this new stuff that you got this month, and I We'll talk to you there.